Good morning. Uh, we're going to do a two-hander. Uh, I'm going to introduce the context for this, which is quite important. You know the context because it, de it defined what we were going to do. Jose will then take you through uh, the method, the issues, the challenges, and some of the content we created and how we worked with the client. And then I'm going to offer you some reflections because we finished the project in the, the spring of this year, having worked for them for nearly a year, uh, that we think might be relevant to anyone doing work on place branding, either reflection or starting anew. So in addition to Place Matters and Bloom, we also worked with the local agency, Casa Havas, very important point this, you know, Yossi speaks Spanish, I'm learning Spanish, but it's a different country. And in fact, how many of you know where Paraguay is? Honestly? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you might know where the geography is, but you don't know the country. You need a partner that really understands the politics and the culture. Um, and these are the, ob the objectives. I'm not going to read them to you. You're quite capable of doing that. But the key thing here is that they understood that what they were doing was not just repairing the uh, information deficiency of the fact that a lot of the world doesn't know where it is, they don't know what it produces, and they don't know the great things that the people and, and the country do. Um, so this was never going to be place marketing. This was a project that was helping them find a, a brand new direction for the, the country and offering them some thoughts as practitioners on where they might take it. A variety of audiences. Um, when you're dealing with the whole country, you're dealing with the whole country. But you can't talk to everyone, so you've got to work with agencies and proxies and representatives. Um, and getting the stakeholders to work together. Just think about your own countries. Do all the stakeholders work per perfectly in harmony? Of course they don't. So you've got to find ways of introducing them to this and understand that they are coming together to build the country. This is not just an ad campaign. This is changing or cementing the direction of the country. And there were some big issues around here. This was a place uh, which had been known some years ago as being insecure, and they'd done a huge amount of work to make it more secure, and passed laws and changing cultures, but the world didn't know it. This is a place that had been developing a very vibrant economy, but the world didn't know it. This is a place where a very large proportion of the, of the country are young people, they're highly skilled, it's a very good education system. But inward investing potential companies didn't know it. So there's a story to tell, but the story was also about future prospects. It was about the things they have planned that are in the pipeline. So it's not just broadcasting what they're doing today, but identifying that they're continuing that progress. So this is about nation branding. This is not about nation marketing. This is about building their way of building their country. I'm going to hand over to Jose, and you'll get me back in about 15 minutes if he's on time. I'll take the from there. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Nation branding is a highly nation brand, two different things, but nation branding is a highly complex situation. It's not even a thing, it's a situation. And the way, the way that we approach this it is to try and simplify this to the max so that it actually works. How do we do this? Well, we try to give it an objective, try to give it a purpose. And according to Bloom, the way we work, at least we see five objectives. This is another one, but I'll talk about it later. Uh, there may be more, but we stick to these five, which is about exports, it's about FDI, it's about tourism, it's about talent, people want to study, live and work, and it's about prominence, the general reputation. And each one of them has a specific target audience, and each audience deals with the brand, and the brand means something completely different to them. So the question is, which objective shall we pursue? Is the country ready to pursue all objectives? Is the brand strategy ready to pursue all these objectives? How do we find this? Well, we have a very advanced methodology that is called asking. <laughs> and we asked. We asked around. We have interviewed more than 100 people in Paraguay, 
more than 100 interviews face to face, one hour with politicians, with diplomats, with business leaders, with artists, with anthropologists, with even the church was interviewed. Okay? So to really understand what is the objective we should pursue and how do they see the brand. We contrasted this with an international survey of more than 1,200 people to match and see how the perceptions were aligned with the reality and if this was really the objectives we should have pursued. Of course, we included additional data, such as digital demand. And here are three conclusions and three directions, if you want, for the, the project. Number one, the brand is not ready to be dealt in all the five dimensions. It's not ready. It's just not ready. How do we know this? Because we asked. And the conclusion was that this is where the country was going. This is where all the policies that have been implemented over the last 10 years have been going towards this direction. This is where the results were paying off. This is where they could walk the talk. And this is where they had an amazing progress. And this is what they needed. So this was the main focus. However, these achievements were not perceived internationally. Paraguay is absolutely unknown. Moreover, the ones that know Paraguay have not a perception of this new reality that the country, what is the country now, and aggressive, very aggressive regional competition, especially from Brazil, that has always looked down at Paraguay. <laughs> but this same country went down. And what was really interesting is that Paraguay continued to raise up. And suddenly the spotlight was no more in this great grands of great Latin American brands, it was about this country. And it was the only one that was growing up. It was the only one that was actually showing lessons. And The Economist even quoted, this is what other Latin America, especially Brazil, should learn from Paraguay. Wow, what a different and amazing shift in perception or direction or reality. Not the perception, because the perception was not aligned with the reality. And this was a tremendous challenge. The third conclusion we got was we had an immense problem domestically, which were the Paraguayans. The Paraguayans are extremely self-critical about their country, even destructive, I would say. And this is not good for the brand, and this is not good for the country. And we had to deal with this situation, of course. Now, to sum it up, these are the three main objectives for the country, not the country brand, but for the country. Attract FDI and boost exports, reposition the country internationally, and also create a sense of pride domestically. This is the objective for the country. And the nation brand, among many other things, can tackle this objective, can go after this objective. Now, nation brand, oh boy. What is nation brand? Oh. Nation brand, in one slide, it's this. It's when I close my eyes and I think about that country, when I close my eyes and I think about that city, whatever it is, what pops up into my head, the emotions, the feelings, not the logos, is nation branding or place branding. It, that's what the brand is all about. And we call this a central idea. Now, this central idea and about this perception, when we talk about good and bad perception, it's very important. Countries most of the times focus in this about, I want to have a better perception. I want to work on my good perception. It's not just good and bad. <laughs> the world is not binary. Within the good, you have to work on how to position the country. What do you stand for? What is the one sentence that defines you? What is that I want you to think about that country when you close your eyes? We call this the central idea. And the central idea is literally what is going to influence, and this perception is what's going to influence these stakeholders in order to either invest, visit, live, work, whatever. So how do we find the central idea for Paraguay? We asked, and we asked, and you may imagine all the amount of workshops and, and, and sessions we had with not just the client, but internally and externally, to find what is the central idea. And we had millions of central ideas, because that's the main challenge, is to find what defines the country. You cannot just say it in one word. Well, maybe you can. All those millions of ideas, we have a filtering process that is no secret. We use our own. It's not rocket science. but. 
to find and just throw away things that don't make any sense. And the two things that are really important when we work on central ideas is it needs to be relevant to the stakeholders we mentioned, it needs to impact them in a way, and it also needs to be accepted by the local stakeholders. So, nine months of work, I'm very pleased to present you that Paraguay, the central idea of Paraguay, and what Paraguay stands for is economically fertile. <laughs> really? <laughs> is this what the country stands for? In our... So we have here critical moment number one, where we strongly discourage the government to go after this. So don't do that. It's like, this does not define it. This is not who you are. I mean, not, over, not only just to mention that, what happens if you have an economical crisis? <laughs> It's gone, the idea. It's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot rely on the central idea for the economy. And the sense of pride, what are you going to say to the Paraguayans? You know, it's just like... And the government answered back, well, not, not really. Actually, you guys gave me the numbers. And the numbers said this. This is a central idea that has best acceptance and is most relevant according to your standards, blah, blah, blah. It's showing that this is the central idea. And concerning the acceptance as well from the local stakeholders, because we have worked, I'm sorry, our asses off in terms of policies, in terms of moving the country forward, and we are ready and we are showing this. And this is a national issue. And you're talking about pride, uh, Bloom, are you saying that, oh, this does not bring pride? Well, tell a Paraguayan that was always looked down and something like that, that we are the providers of, of Qatar ways. Their food is the providers of Qatar ways. The Paraguayan will feel proud. So, let me tell you something, Bloom, we need this. This is who we are. This is really in the essence of our country. And now, here we are. We said, okay, so the situation is, is the government not listening to the consultants or the consultants not listening to the government, right? So I think it was a little bit of both and we endeavored and we understood and we have to be humble to understand that this is what they needed. And maybe sometimes the Nation Brand Project is not about the 30, 20 year project. Maybe it's not ideal but it needs to have a purpose, an objective, and a tangible one. Because let me tell you, the money is public money. You have to give something back. It needs to work. Not necessarily give money back, but it needs to give something back to the society, thanks to the, the uh, nation brand strategy. So we endeavored in this. This was the central idea. Now, central idea is not about promotion. We don't do promotion. We are not marketing. But of course, you have to think about marketing. And whenever you build a central idea, the way to portray this idea and to, to build this thing whenever you're in the head of people is you have to walk the talk. It's through policies, not through logos. It's about actions, activities, and policies. We outlined more than 30. A lot of them were not even visible. I'm going to pick one, which is my arch enemy, and I do this on purpose, which is the logo. <laughs> so one of those dots that is there, we didn't even do the logo, is, but it's going to be the lo about the logo because I have to explain the story. But it's one of the dots. And the, I say it's my arch enemy because always people think that nation branding is about that. Oh, it's, no, it's not. It's just one cherry on the top. You know? Anyways, how to express economically fertile graphically. So we had to look into the economic ecosystem and try to translate that into a visual ecosystem that describe why Paraguay was so economically fertile. So if I would say how to say economically fertile graphically, this is how it would be. I would start to use a language that is not just one thing, but it's several things. Yes, combined with the logo, I will not go into the details why the logo is like this and so on. When together working, it shows that there's some dynamism about the country. And when we look at this, you see that there's something going on there. I almost look at this image and it's almost like a portrait of what the country is and what is economically fertile and the reason why it is economically fertile. And I have a story to tell. And whenever the president, whoever it is, is presenting the country internationally, this is how it looks like. And you start to have a feeling. Again, this is one of those little dots, right? And even bring it down so that society would understand it. Okay, we launched the brand, logo, that, whatever. <laughs> it was an, a neutral, non-political event, which is the Interdevelopment Bank event, which was all Latin America was there. And who launched the brand? It were the kids, it was not even the president, there was no government official, because this is for them. This is the way to take the political aspect out of it, because they said, this is for us, and this is, this is us, this is, this is our work. Oh, you know, we, this finished, this was great, we went for dinner to celebrate, and I started to receive some phone calls. And I received phone calls of people saying, are you all right? And I said, what the hell, yes, what's wrong? Didn't you see the news? And I said, 
what news? Well, this was three hours after you launched the brand. I was in the restaurant and I said I had turned on the TV. There was an intent of a coup. There was a coup in Paraguay. And so you understand what happened. Here's a video from The Guardian. se instalan y se instalan en la demo, en, en la dictadura en este país las barras van a ser de metal contra los parados And this was the video. I, my hotel was 100 meters away from this place. And this is from, we're taken with this phone. So you can imagine the rest. And you Googled Paraguay, and this is what showed up. You know, five hours of this, more exposure than 50 years probably of Paraguay. And then suddenly something passed into my mind, which was... <laughs> so you have an understanding and the sense of timing. The first tweet after the president announced that there was this new Paraguay brand, he didn't launch it, but of course he had to announce, was a, com it was an, a statement from the president asking population to calm down, to non go to violence and so on, right after. And I said, well, thank God, at least they didn't mock at the logo. It's like, <laughs> blood, I mean, really? And then the press started to say that we would receive $10 million, I don't know where they are, to do this logo. Uh, if, the, I would receive, if we would receive $10 million, dinner would be on us to, to do the brand, develop the brand strategy, but, it was just a mess. And, you know, but it, we realized something. And I realized something when I was there. And I was there. And the thing was, something was not right. Because this was the night, really late night. This is the morning, the same place. Nothing happened. Everything was tranquil. People eating out. Families. I was in the restaurant. And what I understood, I'm just going to put my final video, was was this, was that, this is strange, I mean, this is not a coup, this was just a protest, well, just, okay. Some people were protesting, and why, okay, a lot of people, whatever it is, but it was not a coup. So, look, look at the people that actually committed, I, I made another movie, just listen carefully and try to understand the song, but the way they sing, what does it remember? What does it relate to? That's what I hear, it's football. So 400 people, it was paid. That thing was paid, and I saw it with my own eyes, and of course this is my own interpretation, but it was paid. And I said, I don't know who did it, but it was not a coup, and this was much more. Look, look at the guy, this guy's taking a selfie, laughing at the, at the, at the moment. So what we did was like, we, we contacted the government right away, we said, hi, we're here, you know, this is a first, we've never done this before because we, <laughs> this is a first. Uh, let's arrange a crisis committee, let's work around this and try to uh, outline a strategy to tackle this. So, you want to know what we have done? Well, that's a story for another time. Maybe City Nation Place 18. I'm going to hand it over to Malcolm just to give you some hints. <laughs> So just some learning points to share with you. Um, so you're working for a government, 17, 18 departments. Are they getting on in harmony? Do the departments, the state of your country get on in harmony 100% of the time? Of course they do. Where do you live? 
So one of the key learning lessons, which we knew when we went into it, but again, to emphasize it, you've really got to understand the customer dynamics. Yes, we were working for the president. We saw a lot of them. He appointed the Minister of Economic Development as the day-to-day -day advisor, and we saw a lot of him. And it's great, so you've got the access, but they're effing and blinding about the other ministers and departments, and why are they not doing this, and why are they not doing that? And hey, we're the consultants trying to pull the country together to have a common purpose. So this is hard work. And no amount of academic theory about what it should really be can deal with that unless you go and do it and begin to understand it. Engagement is essential, not just consultation. Get them involved in the process from government and bring into government all the kinds of people, including some of the people who are rioting. Put time into understanding the structure of your client and how they manage the country, because that's how they will manage the brand unless you get them to change how they manage the country. And if you're doing a nation brand that's simply about a piece of promotion on the brand, the logo and not much else, but here, the cabinet and the government genuinely wanted to change the way they ran the country. So you've actually got to get deeply involved, emotionally involved with the engagement. And yes, what do you do when the unexpected takes place? People from all over South America, other presidents, major media, you know, if there's a little dissenting group, they're looking at it and thinking, hey, the world is here. Why don't we just organize a little, a, a little piece of development? So my final slide, think ahead and don't leave anything to chance. You might say, I look back in hindsight and said, I could have read in the newspapers the climate, some of these things were issues, but we never thought they'd destroy the brand. It didn't destroy the brand, it just created 24 hours of misconception, which we then managed to repair. So as professional place branders, we and you, should never be arrogant enough to think, that's it, we've done it, it's going to be fine. The world changes, and our world changed in 24 hours, very quickly, very rapidly, as Josie showed you. Went downstairs to breakfast, people are calmly having breakfast, they're reading the newspapers and saying, hey, what did we miss last night? But you have to go out and repair it. And these things can happen in many different ways. So what can possibly go wrong? Just use your imaginations and think about it. Thank you very much.